2015 meeting of the Planning Board to order. The Board will be considering tonight's agenda in the following order. We're going to have the approval of the minutes, and that's from December 16th. Election of officers, then Peterson Hidden Court Subdivision Amendment, public comment, followed by adjournment. So the first item on the uh, agenda is the approval of the minutes. Anyone have any comments, any questions in regards to those minutes from December? Seeing none, would anyone like to make a motion to accept those minutes? Yes, Peter. Move to approve them as submitted. Thank you. Do I hear a second? Thank you, Carol Ann. Any discussion? Okay. All those in favor? And that is unanimous. Um, there being six of us here tonight. Okay. Now, election of officers. Tonight we'll be electing a new chair and a new vice chair. So, uh, would anyone like to nominate a new chair? Yes, Joe. Uh, I'd like to nominate Peter Curry for chair. Thank you very much. Would anyone like to second that nomination? Henry, thank you very much. All those in favor of Peter Curry for the chair for the next two years? No, one year. No, what? <laughs> one year. Oh, it's one year outside. You have to do it again this year. I, I tried. And that was unanimous? I'll abstain. And you're going to abstain? Okay. <laughs> All right. Now we're going to do a vice chair. And also, one year. Oh, can we switch at this point then? Okay. You are the chair. Oh, that's true. We've just nominated you, so I'm leaving you with the nomination of the vice chair. All right. Okay. <laughs> Boy, you got rid of me. Before we continue, I would like to say on behalf of myself and I'm sure on behalf of all the members of the board that we greatly appreciate the wonderful job that Victoria has done for the last two years. She has uh, set and met a very high standard of keeping the, the ship afloat and, and the business getting done and we all appreciate very much what she's done and thank her for it. Uh, moving along, we have to uh, next uh, elect a vice chair. And do I hear any nominations? Elaine? I'd like to nominate Carol Ann Jordan as vice chair. Is there a second? Henry? Any discussion? Uh, all in favor? I'll, I'll abstain. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all but one voting in favor, one abstention. Uh, the motion carries. <coughs> Uh, the uh, next and indeed only item of business we have is the um, application by Hidden Court LLC um, with principals Natalie and Alexander Peterson requesting an amendment to a previously approved uh, Hidden Court subdivision plan located at 340 Ocean House Road to adjust lot lines, building envelopes, and separate driveway access rights which requires review under section 16-2-5, the amendments <coughs> to the subdivision ordinance. Uh, the procedure will be as follows. The town planner will describe the project within the context of town regulations. The applicant, represented by Mr. Steve Moore, will uh, present the project. And the board will uh, begin by making a determination of completeness. Uh, the board will decide whether or not a sidewalk, a site walk, excuse me, and a, or a public hearing would be held. Um, Lorraine, would you like to handle the introduction? Sure, this is going to be very quick. This is in the Residence A district. Middle lot size is 80,000 square feet. So the proposed, well, the adjustments to the existing lots are well, well, well in excess of the minimum lot size for the RA district. Um, this is a subdivision that was approved in 1989. So it's, I was coming here tonight and I was thinking, this is 25 years old. And it's probably tempting to look at this and maybe think of ways to have this subdivision plan look at the kind of subdivision requirements we have today. And I would caution you all to remember it's 25 years old and how much do we want to change this beyond what is being requested by the applicant. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to the chair. Okay. And I, I forgot to mention, but I will now, that uh, following the uh, presentation by the applicant, there will be an opportunity 
for the public to be heard on the subject of completeness, and if we proceed beyond that on the merits as well. Um, Mr. Moore, would you like to present? Thank you. Good evening, board members. Stephen Moore here this evening on behalf of Natalie and Alexander Peterson. Um, as Maureen said, this subdivision was initially approved in early 1989, and then a subsequent amendment occurred in the middle of 1989. And what I have on this board in front of you is the subdivision plan, the amended subdivision plan approved by the board in uh, June of 89. The large outline of the green lot is the stone house lot, that's 42 acres. The yellow lot, the smaller lot in the corner, the 10 acre garden lot, is also owned by the Petersons. The building window as it was approved at the time is outlined in pink. When you read back through the um, board records at that time, there was quite a lot of discussion about house placement, building windows, and working with that land to create this subdivision plan. The Petersons are looking at, they have the lot one, the stone house lot on the market, and they're looking at possibly selling that and retaining the stone house lot for themselves. When we looked at this, these are all exhibits that are in your package. What made sense to us, based on the existing natural features out there, was to take this area and convey that from the stone house lot to the garden house lot, because that's the significant view LA from the garden house down to the water. If anybody took the time to read through the 24 easement documents that run with this property, one of those easements are rights held by the garden house lot in this area for view protection and view maintenance. As we looked at this, that was really the big move that the Petersons wanted to do in order to have the garden lot be the right kind of place for their home. As we walked the property line, what becomes clear out here is when the subdivision was created, the lots didn't exactly tie into some of the cultural features, the natural features that exist out there. As we looked at this, we wanted to use the summer driveway gates, the great interior summer driveway gates, as one of our key points because that's easy to find, easy to reference. So we just decided to pull that little third of an acre out. It's all woods. There's nothing of any real character or merit in there. As just a way to get a little more buffer and protection back into that side. So we just swapped and shifted really based on cultural features, which is the view LA, and a little bit of tidying up of some edges, including this edge through here. The Italian garden comes down and ends in a set of steps right here. So rather than arbitrarily cutting that off as before, we've shifted the line in and around the garden steps out of the Italian garden. So we've tried to tidy this up to make it consistent with some of the natural features out there, but also think about what um, Natalie and Alexander want for their home. The plan we have submitted to you as that amended subdivision plan is this plan. And essentially what we've done is taken those plans from 25 years ago and made it into a plan that you would more typically see as a planning board for a subdivision approval. And again, we've outlined in yellow that garden lot, which has grown from 10 acres to 13.92. And then the, accordingly, the stone house lot has shrunken down to just under 39 acres. And in order to be clear in terms of a recording document, we've shown in hatched areas on the recording plan what those land area shifts are going to be. 
Um, in response to some discussions from the board at the workshop, but also from one of the abutters, we've made a slight change in the building window, making the building window smaller along the line where it abuts the one neighbor to the, to the south. Um, when it was approved, the setback was 30 or 35 feet. We've increased that to 50 feet, which we're showing in that area. So in effect, we've made the building window smaller. And it's a sizable building window. And the, win the building window itself is, is larger than the minimum lot size. It's about 2.4 acres in that area. So that's really the sort of the move of shifting land and adjusting land to get this lot back to something that Natalie and Alexander want for themselves. A couple of key things on it. As I said, there's 22 or 24 different deed references to easements or other covenants and protections. The ones that are relevant to this particular lot are first and foremost this view easement which runs to the benefit of the garden house from the stone house. Once that becomes the interest, obviously that easement doesn't have any real merit or bearing, except for that little triangle right there. There's a little triangle that will stay in place so that the new owners of Hidden Court can't plant anything in that area and thereby obstruct the view down the alley from here. The other thing we've done is the garden house lot retained rights to come across the hidden court driveway. There's two driveways, the so-called summer driveway and then the winter driveway. This lot in the other recording plans retained rights to come across the winter driveway. We removed that right as a part of this because we're looking at the summer driveway being the permanent access for the garden lot. Um, the other easements that exist that relate to this are there's a CMP easement for the CMP service that comes and runs into here and then there's three separate references and other covenants that give the field house lot, hidden court, and the gatehouse lot rights to walk, easement rights to, to pass through. All of those remain intact. We're not amending or changing any of those existing easements because we don't have the rights to. We don't intend to do that. They were granted as part of the original subdivision and the field house lot and the gatehouse lot were conveyed with those rights. Um, in terms of the two other things that the board talked about on this particular property, we have added notes on here to provide some specificity in terms of the activities outside the building window. What we've indicated is that towards the west of this property, in this woodland area, the activities will be limited to removal of dead, down, and diseased trees. What we have indicated in here is the ability to prune and thin to remain and uh, preserve the LA and then the ability to protect the formal gardens. We want to be able to maintain those, replant them, preserve them. There's two little summer homes in there, two little summer gazebos, stone gazebos, brick gazebos. So we've said we want to be able to maintain that so it's clear in the future as things move forward, outside the building window they can keep those gardens intact and maintain them and limit the pruning and thinning on the other end. The other thing we included in your package was the amendment process we went through to get the summer driveway entrance approved um, back with this planning board when Tom Emery was chair. We had a discussion about that last time. The previous recording plan showed two options for a driveway. I went back and talked about this with the Petersons. The Petersons decided that since the summer driveway was the historic driveway, because the half and refers had gone through a process with the town to amend the subdivision plan and made changes in the road to meet the traffic and safety standards that they wanted to keep that as their primary access in and out. So that will be 
the proposed access because, again, we c included in our submission to you the order from the board approving it and then the follow-up documentation on the changes that were put in place. So that's really the, the long sort of winded version of where we are. And what we're asking the board to do is look at this. You have the checklist. You have the letter from Steve Harding as the acting town engineer. We believe we've addressed all of those issues. I am going to ask the board this evening, as you move through this, to give consideration to the, the need for a site walk and the need for a public hearing. The Petersons obviously would like to keep this moving, but we will wait and let the board deliberate those points. Um, but our hope is that we don't need a site walk or a public hearing because the public have been involved. But I'll defer to the chair on his first evening and the rest of the board to let that deliberation occur. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Moore. Uh, at this point, um, we will open. Yes, Joe? Can I ask just a real quick question? Sure. Steve. Steve, so these documents are what's there now, right? This exactly. At this point, we will open the meeting for comment by the public uh, on the issue of completeness. Uh, any member who would like to speak is welcome to come to the podium. Please give your name and your address. And um, we roughly allocate three minutes per person. But if you need more, we'll try to make it work. Good evening. My name is Frank Strout. I live at 1184 Shore Road. A uh, little bit of history about the property. My family owned uh, all of this land at one period of time. My great uncle uh, Robinson um, built the stone house and the gardens and all of the, uh, all of the uh, other uh, beautiful features of the property. So I, I would encourage you as, as part of your, your process is maybe to do a site walk. It is a beautiful piece of property. If, if you haven't been there, you'll see why there's a lot of interest in, in, in what is happening with the property going forward. Uh, I'm a partial owner of the land over here that abuts Hidden Court. Um, so another reason why I'm, I'm, I'm also very interested in, in uh, going on uh, what, what's happening here. Um, I, I think from my own personal standpoint, I think what the Petersons are doing uh, makes sense. Uh, just from a, a, the way you look at the layout of the garden lot, and the view going down forward there. Uh, I hate to see the old uh, formal gardens uh, leave the uh, original property, the stone house. But once you do the site walk, I, th I think you'll see that it does make sense. Um, when, th when these lots were laid out back in the late 80s, there was a lot of concern and effort put into locating uh, each one of those, th th those four lots, the four lots all together, and to keep it as just being four lots, to protect the natural resources there, to protect the view and the privacy for all of the, all of the, uh, all of the owners of the land, because they're very nice, very expensive lots. Uh, my, my one concern uh, with this process is uh, that, that there not be any opportunity for that building envelope to be moved down to uh, the new lot or the new area that's being created, the area that's from lot one being transferred over to lot three. So in other words, what I'm saying is um, I, I would love to see the approval be conditional on that the building will stay as it is, as amended here, uh, but not be allowed to come down into this, this area down here into the field. And I think you'll see why, if you do a site walk, how that's going to really change the whole characteristic of all the property. Um, so that would be the one thing that I would ask, and I think a lot of the neighbors feel the same way as we look at the views, that uh, a, a conditional approval that the building envelopes stay in the location that it currently is, as amended by, uh, by Steve Moore. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Trout. Yes, sir. Good evening. I'm uh, Tom Dunham. My wife and I live um, down in, in front of this property and, um, at 11 and 12 Becky's Cove Lane. And I just want to <clears throat> underscore the comments uh, and the con <clears throat> suggested condition that Frank has just indicated. 
is that um, <clears throat> I certainly support what the plan is here, but to keep the um, garden, the building envelope where it's proposed and not have it slide into the field. Uh, and you'll see if you do a site walk um, why uh, a number of us are <clears throat> would like to preserve the open field as it is. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> are there any other members of the public who would like to be heard? Uh, there being none, we'll close the public part of the, uh, <coughs> excuse me, completeness consideration. And uh, Steve, if you want to go back to the podium, I, I guess we'll open the, the uh, matter up to the uh, comments and questions from the board. Elaine. I have one completeness question. Um, Steve, I did not try to look through all of the easements that are referenced in this document. Can you just confirm that one of them gives the stone house lot one and the easement across the garden house lot for access? Yes, it actually does. One of those easements allows stone house foot traffic, not vehicular access, but foot traffic through the garden house lot. Okay, so are you proposing to grant a new easement? Because otherwise, you really couldn't close off the other driveway, otherwise the stone house lot would have no vehicular access. The stone house access, vehicular access, still occurs through the winter driveway. So the stone house, the stone house driveway continues and will be their vehicular access. So the So what you're the only are you cutting off the connector between the two? We're just going to close the gates. There's a, that, that, right where that hinge point turns, yep. we're going to physically close the gates that exist right at that hinge point. Okay. I misunderstood what your plan was then. The, the stone house will continue to have walking rights as they have now through that lower area. But this, we're not altering the stone house vehicular access rights. Over the garden house? Only the garden house. We're removing the garden house rights to use the stone house driveway. Okay, so the vehicular access is separate for the two properties. Exactly. Okay, thank you. Any other board uh, members have questions? I think just, again, for the record, the Petersons know about the building window issue. They have no interest in moving that building window. And we've identified it on the recording plat so that it will become part of the record. If the board wants to make that a condition of approval, we have no problem whatsoever because clearly the Petersons have no intention of adjusting, changing, or moving that building window any other way than what we've done here, which is reduce it. Any other questions? I just, I, Steve, I have two <coughs> fairly small, minor questions. And one is, I think, confirming what you just told Elaine, but that little driveway that goes from the stone house down to the garden house driveway, you say the gate will be closed? That's right. But the, the way itself is going to remain in place and you plan to keep showing it on the plan? That's exactly right. We're going to leave it because the Petersons feel very strongly that that historic roadway has some real merit to remain intact. We don't want to tear that driveway section up between here and here. We're leaving that drive in and leaving that drive in. But unless your easement documents say otherwise, doesn't that imply that the um, stone house still could go down and use the garden house driveway if they chose to? If they chose to, but those existing right here are a set of very large brick columns with metal gates. We're actually going to close them and lock them. So there's no way to drive around them because there's vegetation on either side. No, I understand that. But if, if, if indeed they had some kind of a right to pass through there because you hadn't extinguished it, the, the gate would not cause the same effect. I, I'm just saying... I, I understand what you're saying. Yeah. I'm just asking the question. I'm not sure it's a, a matter of great import, but... In... 
I'm not going to go through the whole deed transaction that unraveled it, but Hidden Court had rights to use the garden lot driveway. They were subsequently unraveled in a deed from Davis to Hamlin. So the, the prescriptive rights for the stone house to use the garden lot driveway are removed. They're gone. So the stone house no longer has rights. The only reason it's being used is because the Petersons own both lots. Okay. Second question is the, um, the expression in the note on your plan which talks about preservation of the view corridor. What exactly is the view corridor? Uh, looking at the plan, I was a little puzzled. But you have a no-build area. You have the new conveyed lot. And then you have kind of a triangular-shaped set of lines. That I'm drawing right now. There's a tree line that does that. I don't know if everybody can see that, but there's, there's this incredible set of oaks, of red oaks, that come down this side and this side and set up this view down to Zeb's Cove. And that's what we call the view court. It's not a... It's not a prescribed, it's not a defined view quarter. It's a view quarter created by the trees and it's been maintained as that. Okay, up on the other, at the end of that parcel, there's a note that says existing view quarter easement for the benefit of the garden house lot. That is the same thing, but I, I don't quite see what the lines of that thing are. Is, is this, right now it's, it's a little bit mysterious as to what the view quarter is if you just look at the plan. I guess the best way to do this is in a way, it sort of troubles me that I remember all these things. In this original subdivision plan, there's a view easement with the stone house when the feet of this went like that. And so this was set aside for the benefit of the garden lot to protect the view down that area. When we convey the land over, all you're left is that little dog leg, which we still want to keep to the benefit of the garden lot because it still remains on land that will be in the fee interest of Hidden Court. Well, if I read your plan correctly, all that the view e corridor easement consists of is that little triangle working off of the north side. Correct. The in, this, in this new configuration, that's all that will remain of that view easement. Okay, so that is the view easement to which you refer here? It is. Ah. Thank you. Peter, I think your question really speaks to the fact that we need a site walk. Well, For the benefit of people who have never been down there and can't visualize what it is that he's talking about. Right. I, if there, I want to see if there are any other comments from the board. I comments on completeness. Mm -hmm. I think this is personally complete, so I'm waiting to take the vote, but after the vote, I do have comments and questions before we get to the site walk part. So I'm waiting to take the vote on completeness, and okay. then I have comments and questions. Sure. Okay, then if there's nothing further to be done on the issue of completeness, um, right. uh, is there a motion on that subject? Joe. Uh, make a motion for completeness. Be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Hidden Court LLC, also known as Natalie and Alexander Peterson, Peterson for amendments to the Hidden Court subdivision located at 340 Ocean House Road to adjust lot lines, building envelopes, and separate driveway access rights be deemed complete. And I'll second that. Okay, we have a motion made and seconded. Is there any discussion on the motion? 
Oui. I just noticed one thing here. So oh, this is a question. It says Hidden Court LLC, also known as Natalie and Alexander Peterson. Is there a limited liability company that owns this property, or is it owned by the individuals? It's owned through Hidden Court LLC, a limited liability company. So I guess I would suggest that the words also known as be amended to read owned by Natalie and Alexander Peterson. To be the sole member. There, there are, no, are there any other members of the LLC? No, there are not. No. Okay. So, is, is that a motion to amend the? A motion to amend the motion for completeness. Is there a second to motion? The, uh, Henry will have a vote on the motion to amend. And motion to change. Uh, to amend. Uh, yeah. yeah, motion to amend in favor. Yeah, I accept. So, okay, and then we will now have a vote on the amended motion. All in favor? It carries unanimously. You got that uh, ready? Okay. Okay, we, uh, we're now at the point, I guess, uh, what to do next. The uh, applicant's representative has asked that, the, their, the, that there not be a site, uh, well, that we move on without a site uh, walk and to simply approve it this evening. Uh, there has been some uh, discussion. I'm sorry, Victoria, you had, you had comments, questions. you said. Go, Is please. that okay if I ask some questions Absolutely. before we get to yep. that part? Thank yep. you. Um, I do have a couple of questions. Um, just for general piece of um, information, um, on the original plan, you see the gravel road that goes all the way around the building it's called Hidden Court? The gravel road that goes all the way around the building. That's chicken coop, I believe you mean, right? The one that goes all the way around the stone house, is that the yes. one you're talking sorry. about? Did I say garden? Yeah, it's called gravel road. Yeah, is there that gravel road that goes all around the, um, the stone house? I think I said it wrong. That wasn't on the original plat. That's something that's new. Can you just describe it? Because once again, it ends abruptly at, at the garden house uh, building, well, not the building, but the lot lines. That's something new. What, what is that, just real basic? Um, at the time that the subdivision was approved, There was and has been a road that came across the end of the Italian garden, looped around, came through here, and came back up. So that gravel road that was there at the time of the subdivision, I don't know why it wasn't shown on the plan, but that it exists as the gravel road. When that was Change when the half and refers added the garage building right here that was put in, and we've just chosen to show that because it's actually there. Yeah. Okay. How does it end right at? It, it just stops bushes, trees when it gets to the lot line that is lot number three. We'll, we'll see if Frank is going to challenge this. <laughs> this. This comes up and sweeps in here and meets, and it meets an old roadbed that dies out right in here. So it does die out right there in the garden lot. But historically, there was an old road that came all the way through that and out to 77. So this is the remains of that from here to here. Okay. This, people won't be using that. They won't be driving there. It, I know you have these gates that you're going to chain and lock over on one side. That's a slightly different road than this. That, this summer driveway was put in by Henry Robinson right there. This was, this was an old historic road that used to come like this and then come down through the field. Okay, not much of a road. Uh, right now, it's just a, right through here. It's a little depressed gravel. Um, more like a tote road. It's not a real driveway. 
A um, little bit of gravel base, but it's depressed down into the ground, 8 inches, 15 inches. Okay. I appreciate having that information. Just It's new to this plan compared to the old one. It is. It's that change that shows that, that gravel. Um, I also went through the plan, and, and I just had a few things I wanted to point out. Um, Governelli's plot, his name is misspelled on this plan. Thank I wanted you. to point that out. I think that's a U, should be a V. Okay. Um, on the garden house, you have a very small 1,350 13, square feet that are, is being transferred area to become part of garden house lot. Is that area just too small to actually hatch? Because you have hatch marks, hatch marks on the other two. Is that just too small to show up on this plan? I mean, it's labeled, but it didn't have markings. Um, we'll call that a Scribner's error. So we, we didn't actually, when that came through, we didn't mark it, but it should be marked because it's part of that transfer. That could be marked too. Yep. Yeah, that'd be nice. Okay. Uh, let's see. Um, lot number two, the field house lot. Mm -hmm. um, it's called Field Wins with an S, LLC. So just if that could be corrected. Isn't that what we have it on there? Is Oh, you're right. Thank you. This field wins LLC. Yep. Okay. And then up at the top, Dexter Henneman. Um, I noticed Henneman was misspelled. There was a typo there. But I also noticed that you referenced the um, book and page to the McGraths have now purchased that lot. I know technically the now or former. If Henneman was not misspelled, it would be like, okay, that's the former. But the now is McGrath. I was wondering, could that be updated just to show that the grantee to that? Because you have the right book at page, but okay. And then on, on the lot that you have labeled as Cape Elizabeth Land Trust, way up at the top. I don't think we have one labeled as. Oh, oh here, yes, thank you. On the big. Now, um, kind of picky, but. The land trust, as you know, does not own that entire lot. They own part of it. I'll call it a future building lot is also pictured. Where it's labeled way up high land trust, I mean, if you were to look at your own um, documents that were handed out, you would see that the land trust actually owns just a small portion. Right, been You're up into somebody else's property with that label. That label mm -hmm. really should be brought down. Yeah, there's, right, it, it looks like the land trust owns right. that land, and it, it really doesn't. So I just wonder if that could be just pushed down sure. for accuracy. On uh, Zeb's Cove, I was told today that it's not an apostrophe S, and I'd have to look to somebody who knows this better than I do. I really did not know if this is Zeb's with an S, apostrophe S, or just S. That's what I was told. There is no apostrophe in that S, according to the original deed from King George to the Robinson family. So I was wondering if we could remove that. It already is on the plan, thank you. No, I meant uh, Maureen brought this to my attention today and I went back and looked at the plan. Oh, okay, I see. All right. Now, that easement that you were speaking of uh, uh, with the view corridor, I actually looked at that deed. Um, and that deed probably should be, I mean, that easement information should probably be included down in the general notes. See how you have note number three saying Stonehouse lot subject to restrictions described in a certain deed. I'm wondering, could you add a garden house lot subject to restrictions described in the deed, and the book would be 9469, page 49. It nicely describes and gives the detail that the board was asking for because I read that the view corridor is those areas of lot one which lie within 1,200 feet of the mean high water line at Zeb's Cove. It's also the restricted improvement zone and it's also the no view impairment zone. So there's actually a couple of zones here which um, I can see why you showed that one and not the others, um, it would get a little messy here. I understand why you didn't want to do it. So I, I was hoping at least we could reference it because they're very unique. Some say that you can um, 
allow trimming of vegetation and thinning of trees. Others say you can't do that. I mean, they're all unique, each of these little corridors, and there's three of them. So it's, even though they're called view corridor, they each have its own distinct. I was wondering if we could add that to plan. Okay. Uh, let's see. Um, so that's still there. I was wondering also in the general notes, um, kind of bringing it up to date. Sometimes we have like what zoning, what zone this is, like it'll be the designated zoning district. Mm -hmm. We could put maybe RA in there so people know that what we're talking about. Um, also some space standards and setback provisions that those side yards and rear yards are 30 feet, just kind of bringing it up to date from its original um, plan. And then under general notes, you see the, uh, the one that says book 27593, page 21? That's the old Heffenreffer when, he, uh, when they purchased it. The new one should be 31434-333. And that would be documented right inside the information that you gave us, the warranty deeds. So that person's showing that particular one is the incorrect book and page. We should probably update it to show that Hidden Court purchased it, not the Heffenreffer Trust. Okay. Uh, I think that might be it. Okay. I think that's it. So I was just wondering if those changes could be made. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you very much. Do the board members have a point of view on whether or not a site block would be desirable. Personally, I'd like to see it. Hey, Henry, Elaine? Um, having had the privilege to walk around this property during the garden tour, I don't feel I need one, but I don't object to one. Caroline? I've been down there, so I don't particularly need one, but I felt that some of the questions being asked indicated that others might feel it necessary. Uh, Joe, Victoria, I, I mean, I would love to go see it, but I don't feel that I need it to help me make a decision here. That's how I am feeling. Um, the changes that they're requesting, and they're not asking that the building envelope be moved or changed, and if that's not part of the request, they would have to come back to move that building envelope and then the planning board at that time may say maybe we should look at where you wish to move it but they're not asking that and there are easements as i just pointed out which will now be added to the general notes that are very clear on what can or cannot be done in this new part that's to become the garden house lot so i feel comfortable that it's been captured on this plan the concerns that are being mentioned about not moving that building Okay, I, I do take note of the fact that a couple of the abutters had thought it would be a good idea. There doesn't seem to be a lot of enthusiasm on the board. Uh, I find myself pretty much where uh, you folks are, Joe and uh, Victoria, and not seeing it to be a, an urgent need. Um, that leaves us with the choice of scheduling this for a public hearing on the meeting of February 23rd, or I guess conceivably, could we handle that tonight if the board wanted to? It's, the notice was sufficiently ambiguous. Uh, I mean, it did talk about the application. Well, if, if you handle it tonight, you're going to have to capture in conditions of approval everything that you've suggested be changed on the plans. There was a lot of small things. Yeah, that's true. <clears throat> Um, I would also maybe um, just suggest that um, where the public now can't come back and, and talk to us and they've heard our discussion, I know speed can be a very important factor, but transparency and openness is also a very important factor too. And I would almost weigh in on the openness and the transparency and allow our comments to now be with the public who will have then a chance to come back if they wish to encourage something that we are not capturing. That was my feel. I'm not sure how other people feel. Uh, uh, Elaine? Um, I, I actually had some other questions about the plan, but we can 
resolve the other issue first. I, I guess I think they're going to be, we're going to request enough changes in the plan that I'd like to see the revised plan. Okay. Uh, Caroline, do you have any? Any? Um, I'm sorry, I any, closed the door any, so I can hear. Sorry, any, other, any other comments? <laughs> yeah, I would like to just mention one thing. Uh, two of the gentlemen who spoke uh, expressed concern about the building envelope not sliding uh, off in the direction of Zeb's Cove and, and interfering with things. And I, I, I think Victoria and or Joe made the point, and I think it's correct, that if this is approved as it's been presented, the building envelope isn't going anywhere unless they come back to the planning board and try to make it happen, which would essentially be the same thing as if it were noted on the plan that it couldn't be moved. So I think they can rest comfortably in that. Uh, the sense I'm getting is that perhaps we should notice this for the public hearing in February. Um, so we'll have a chance to review the updated plan and so that the members of the public could be heard with how the response has been to the plan and approve it at that time. Any discussion on that? Oh, Lee, I'm sorry. Um, I think that's a good idea. And I, I think that they're um, reflecting some of the concerns about the neighbors. This plan is inconsistent in terms of where it shows existing vegetation and where it doesn't. My understanding from what's been said is that the 50-foot setback from the Governale lot, and I guess for it's 30 feet for the Strout property, that that is in fact vegetated. And that would be our subdivision buffer requirement. And so I think it would be important that it be shown on the plan that that is a vegetated area that needs to remain vegetated. Because otherwise somebody would come back later and not know what was required there. So I think you would want to show that vegetation. Um, and also, following up on, on comments that were made earlier, we have um, a view corridor that exists in an easement that's now being, well, it will in, at least in part go away because it will be when the two lots are merged. But again, to be more specific in terms of what can and can't be cut within that area, I think we need to show a view corridor line with an approximate width to just show how much can be opened up there and what needs to be preserved. Otherwise, arguably, you could open up that entire view corridor, and I don't think that's your intention. I think you intend to retain the rows of trees there, so I think we need to show them with a little more detail on the plan. You mean you want to see the trees shown? I don't think we need to show every individual tree, but if we can show the clearing corridor, then it will be clearer. And, and also to indicate that the rest of it is vegetated. You have your little scallops that show the beginning of vegetation, but it's actually not clear where it goes. And if what we're saying is it has to stay there, then we ought to be able to see in some at least rough way what's there. Not a problem. Yeah. Steve, maybe this is the same thing as was said before, but if in fact the view corridor easement is that little triangular piece which you have shaded in, um, does that exist in meets and bounds in one of the documents? Or is, it, is this sort of an abstraction of more or less what you look no, at? It, it exists. The same, yes, it exists in meets and bounds. Okay. It would it be possible to put in a couple of okay. d distances and, and, and courses uh, on that? Because, I, as I say, when I read it, I was having trouble figuring out exactly where this view corridor was. And I, I appreciate that there are a bunch of different easements, uh, view easements floating around here. And this, but this is the one we're talking about, right? It is. Yep. Okay. About access for fire trucks. Um, the long, narrow driveway for what's going to become the garden house has that, and then I see there's some brick gate posts at the beginning. I guess my question would be is the fire chief competent that he can get a truck through those brick gate posts? And is it a problem from a fire perspective 
that the gate between those two properties is going to be permanently barred so that in an emergency, a fire truck would not have a, the circular route in there that it now has, assuming a fire truck can get in there at all. The, the driveway that's at the, the southernest, southernmost end in, indeed has brick posts and I can say that the fire chief at the time would have preferred them to be wider apart, but that entire driveway intersection with mm -hmm. Ocean House has been previously approved by the town. Does that the town include the, gate, the brick gate post? The brick gate post too. So not the ideal situation, but we kind of already said yes. The question about the, the, the locked gate between the two, mm -hmm. um, the fire chief has seen this entire plan, but uh, if the board is gonna table the application this evening, I can make sure that he knows about that lock gate and provide some kind of comment for your next meeting. And I'd appreciate it if he would also provide some comment for what's already approved because it is within our authority to take a look at that again if we're now not comfortable with it. I just, I just, I wanted to follow up because um, I'd mentioned the easement and what it makes up the view corridor. Um, I've seen that plan. I, I've, it's actually, like you said, it's already, there's a plan out there, it's, it's up there. Um, and actually, um, it's, it's uh, 60 feet, I believe, away from the Strout property is where the, Correct. right, it's, it's a 60 feet, so it, it's all meat and bound out. And I didn't know, um, I, did, I kind of hesitated to ask you to show what is up there, because I've seen it, and it's a lot of work. And are you proposing them because it goes over the planted area, goes over the lawn? Are you proposing to have um, all of that information on this one sheet, or are you going to make a second sheet? I I'm just want to make sure I'm all for more information because there's a lot in that. Yeah, we did not want to do that because of the density of it and the complexity mm. of it. I don't know if it makes sense then a second sheet or I, I'm not I'm just kind of throwing it out to the board I've seen this plan there's a lot to it and there's already a lot on this and I like more information I think it is important but I'm, I'm trying to find out the best way to show this so that it's not so busy that we can't even read it so yes yeah, my reaction Victoria this may not be shared by the others is that I think it would be helpful to have a listing of the recording information of the cluster of documents that make up this batch of easements where it's essentially private arrangements between what will be two abutting property owners. I'm not sure that it makes sense to require the laying out of it on the plan as long as it's referred to. That would be kind of my take on that. I thought I heard somebody else say they actually wanted to see it. Uh, Sorry, carry on. I, I just want to respond to that. I guess I'm concerned because it is the subdivision buffer between this lot and the Strout Retrained Trust, so that at least along the property line between this lot and the Strout's lot and this lot and the Gouvernale's lot, it seems to me we should show such buffer as there is to make sure that it's maintained. Other than that, I think you're probably right. Right. Oh, Henry. Um, this is regarding the triangular view corridor and the above, which is a no build area. <clears throat> so if you move outside of that build area, <clears throat> you can block off that side of the triangle. Um, would it not be advantage to extend that no build area so that it, I know mostly nobody wants to build there, but just in case somebody does extend the build area so that you actually get a view of Zebco without somebody building there. I know that's somewhat true, <coughs> but while we're making all these changes to the plan, it ought to, I think you ought to increase that, that size of the no build area. Those view easement documents, you can see that they the way the rest of that document spells it out, you're precluded from doing anything in those specified zones, as was mentioned, there's two other zones that exist downfield. So I think, let me tackle how best to get that encoded onto this plan, whether it's giving enough of the prescriptive deed calls 
picking up the two lower zones, which are pretty easy to show on that plan, and then maybe creating an inset to show how that works on the lower part of the... I, I've heard the board. I, I can take a look at that and figure out a way to get that information by deed reference, absolutely, but then in plan view in the parts where it can be made clear. Lori? I just want to get this on the record. From what I remember reading, from that patched area that is the protection area for the field house lot, moving east towards the water, you can't do anything there. Yes, that's correct. That's in the deed yes. conditions already. So you can't do help. anything there. So then why is this defined as a different area? It's, it's just the entire plan is a patchwork of different restrictions. But at the very end, there is nothing you can do there. OK. Is that fair? That's absolutely accurate. OK. To, sorry, I'm sorry. Quick no. question. So on this first sheet, it looks, when I looked at this, it looks to me like you have this squiggly green line and this one, and that's the, the view corridor that's going on between the two of them, right? So it's taking up almost, so the existing vegetation is everything below that line, which is based on close to half, half that width towards the bottom and almost the entire width towards the top. Right, the important thing to keep in mind with that is that that is the amended recording plan from 89. That vegetation line is different. We've gone out and located the vegetation line. That's why I think it's important, as was that, we will show the actual vegetation lines on there, which will help then make that clear, because the Hatton reference performs some pruning, but in fact, puts this line further to the southwest. Okay. Other questions or comments? Okay, I think it was the sense of the board that we would not require a uh, sidewalk, but that we would uh, table the application to the February 23rd meeting <coughs> for final approval. Uh, would somebody like to make a motion to that effect? Okay. Motion to table for public hearing. Be it ordered that the above application be tabled to the regular February 23, 2015 meeting of the planning board, at which time a public hearing will be held. A second. Right. Joe, uh, any discussion on the uh, second in motion? All in favor? Opposed? Passes unanimously. I just want to note for the record that even though the meeting has been moved to February 23rd, the submission deadline will remain January 30th. Right. Duly noted. Thank you for reminding me. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'd also like to remind the board and members of the public there will be a special workshop on January 27th uh, to hopefully finish off the land use amendments. Uh, there's no other uh, existing business. Uh, the public may comment this time. I don't believe the public is <laughs> They're all running away. with us any longer, so we'll open and then close the uh, public comment. And I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Second? All in favor? Unanimous. We stand adjourned. Unanimous. Yep. It was. <laughs>